Okay, so the lecture for today is solving LP problems using computers. I specifically we're going to use Excel, Microsoft Excel, and the Excel server to solve auditing and programs. So the agenda is uh, introduction. I'm going to teach you uh, Excel, uh, how to use Excel server to solve these problems. But before you use the the solver, you need to set up the spreadsheet in order to be able to, to use the solver. And we're going to use the Yapeto problem as an example, and then we're going to find a solution for these problems. So the learning objectives is to learn how to use the Excel solver to solve linear programming models, um, and the recommended readings, if you want to uh, follow or read your textbook, you can go to section 2.3.1. Okay, so other than using Excel to uh, plot graphs and do table plots, Excel also has a capabilities to solve linear programs. And how many of you are familiar with the solver? The one person. This is the enemy that they now have. And allow you to do more powerful type of uh, solving problems with more powerful tools. And one of those tools is the uh, the solver for for optimization or for linear programming. So in this lecture, we will uh, we show how to use Excel solver to find the optimal solution to an LP problem. And the key to solving an LP and a spreadsheet is to set up a spreadsheet that tracks everything of interest. So you know the problem is going to give you some information about the cost, the constraints, uh, the resources that you have available. So the most important part is for you to set up these tables or these information into the uh, spreadsheet so you can uh, use the, the solver to solve this problem. So let's set up the spreadsheet. Um, there's three major things that you need to, to consider when you're setting up your spreadsheet. You need to identify the cells of interest that can be varied. These are called the changing cells. Any idea of which part of the model will be changing in your solution? So if you look at your, your formulation for any of the problems that you have worked on in this class, what are the parameters or what are the things that change in your model? Or will be changing in your model. Correct. The decision method. So if you remember from the graphical solution method, we were searching on finding the best solution. And the best solution is given by the decision variable. So if you're changing cells, most likely what you're going to have is the decision variable. Then we have identified the cell that contains your objective function. That's going to be your target cell. So the objective function will be located in one specific cell. What we call that cell is the target cell. And then we need to identify the constraints and tell the solver to solve the problem. So changing cell for the decision variables, the target cell for the objective function, and then we're going to type or write the formula for the constraints. So once you, once you hit the solve button, you'll see that the solution will come up um, after a few seconds. So let's go over the, the problem that we're going to use as an example. So this is a problem that we saw in class already. Um, we have two types of, of toys that we want to fill. We have some requirements in terms of the profit. So we know how much. Uh, we can charge for, for each type of product and the materials. How much does it cost you to, to produce these toys? We also have some information about the variable cost. And we have the requirements in terms of the resources that we need to complete each type of toy. Uh, and we have the same information for the, for the trade. So you're familiar with this problem. And we formulated the problem. Um, we have also extra resources here, um, just uh, for review purposes. Uh, we 
all the raw material, uh, we have 115 hours and we have 80 carpentry hours. The demand for the trains is unlimited and at most 40 soldiers are bought each week. So we know what is the top demand for the soldiers. And our objective is to maximize the weekly profit, which is the difference between revenues and expenses. So we're going to formulate the problem and we're going to put it to Excel. So we know this is the formulation. We have the, the objective function with maximization of the of the profit. We have the, the requirements in terms of the condition for trade, and we have 100 hours, which is our limit. We have 80 hours for carpentry and the requirements for the stack of authority. And we have the constraint in terms of the demand for soldiers has to be less than or equal to 40, and the non-negativity constraint. So our variables are going to be positive. If you remember from the graphical solution, we found that this point here is our optimal value, where x2 equals 6 and x1 equals 20. So our optimal solution is when you produce 20 uh, soldiers and 60 uh, trainers. That gives you a revenue of 180. Okay, so let's, you can use the computer now. Um, if you go to tracks, you can pull out the Excel file or the dasher. So please download that file. And when you open the file, Inside the, the uh, lectures, so with the PowerPoint slide, there's a there's a spreadsheet there. Download that spreadsheet. Uh, the Excel file. Now, when you take it, because I'm giving you the table and the format for this problem already. But well, most of the time you can have trouble with this. But so this is just the way I, I like to spread the information. Like I start by putting all the data that is given by the problem at the top. So for this problem we have the selling price, the raw material cost, the variable cost, finishing labor, and the carpentry hours. That is required by each type of, of product or, or item. So that information is here. So I'm putting that table with the information for this cycle at the top. Now, I want to put uh, some information about the change itself, which I know are my variables. And I'm only having two variables in this problem, x1 and x2. x1 corresponds to the soldiers, x2 corresponds to the train. Okay? And this identity because the Excel is going to give me the value of both sides. Okay, so both variables are empty. I also have the cell for the objective function which is also empty. That's my target cell. This will always be a single cell. You will only have one cell for the objective function. But the change itself will depend on how many variables you have. So if you have 20 variables, you will have 20 cells. One per variable. If you have six variables, you will have six cells. One per variable. And then I have another table that basically is going to be used to write my constraints for the problem. So I know I have three constraints, so I have one row per constraint. Any questions up to this point? Okay. So 
you start by setting your spreadsheet. You have set up your spreadsheet. Now we need to use Excel to solve this problem. Okay, so again, this is uh, just telling you what we have. So we have our, our formulation, and I'm trying to set up this spreadsheet in such a way that I can represent this formulation. So the first thing I need to do is to set up the objective function. Okay. Uh, how many of you are familiar with writing formulas in Excel? Excel formulas. How many of you have no experience with formulas? Yes, sir. <laughs> so in order to add, let's say, 27 and 21 in a cell, you would do equal this cell plus this cell. Right? You want to know how to, how to do that. Okay, so that's the, the basic stuff that I, I need for this uh, specific exercise. So if, you need, if you know how to add two cells, that, that's fine. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to set up my objective function. So I'm giving you here the formula. Basically, what I'm doing here, I'm trying to represent this 3x1 plus 2x2. But you know that 3 comes from the selling price. 27 minus the material cost, 14, minus the variable cost, which is 10. So that equals 3. So this 3 is coming from here. Okay, if you all know, I mean, you can see that, right? So that's the problem. The revenue that you're getting after we subtract the cost and the selling price, from the selling price. Same thing for this guy here. This 2 comes from 21 minus 10 minus 10. That equals 10. The reason why I'm not putting 3 in the cell, I'm not putting all these expressions here. Which is this. This expression is this is twenty seven minus fourteen minus ten. The reason why I'm not just putting three times nine is because I want if I want to change those prices and solve the problem one more time, then this is already coded. So the only thing that you have to do is to change the numbers there, hit solve, and we'll solve the problem with the new value. Okay, so let's set up the, the objective function in Excel. <clears throat> so we go here, the objective function again is 27, so we go here, hit this cell, B2, minus the raw material cost, minus the variable cost. We need to add some parentheses here. Because we are going to multiply this times what? Look at the objective function. We multiply 3 times x1. And what is x1 represented in here? x1. So we multiply this difference times a1. So multiply. So we use the start sign. Times this cell. Okay. 
So right now what we have in this expression is three times x1. Any questions? Next following. Okay. Now we need to put the rest of the expression. So plus two x2. So we have plus I'm going to open a new parenthesis here. We have 21 minus 10 minus 9 multiplied times x2. So in the slide, we should have this expression, but again, this is what it represents. We are doing 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2. And that's your objective function. You need to make sure that you are using the card itself to have the formula for the objective function. Okay? Any questions? What will be the value if I need it there at this point? Zero. Why is that? Because we have no value for x1 and x2. So when the cells are empty, that means Excel thinks that that equals zero. But if you put, for instance, one here, you will have three. Right? Three times one. Okay. So for now it's zero. So let's go back to the slice. See what we do next. So we have our, our objective function now. Now let's work on the constraints. So the first constraint is this one, 2x1 plus x2, and that is the thinking constraint. So I already put the number here, we have a hundred hours available for the thinking constraint, but now we need to set up this formula in this cell. So we have a cell x0 that 2x1 plus x2 needs to be less than or equal to 100. So we follow the same steps that we did for the objective function. This is going to be equal to how many hours we have. Again, I want to keep everything in the formula format. So what is this 2 that is here? In case I want to change that in the future, I just Put the new number here, and that will be part of my constraint. So I'm going to use this cell for finishing labor. This is 2 times x1. Plus 1 times x2. So this is representing the 2 times x1 plus x2 that is better equal to 100. Which is my first constraint. So I have the left side is here. B5, 2 times x1, plus 1 times x2. Right here. So that is this constraint. Any questions? Can you try to set up the second constraint? So after you hit enter. For 
like to set up the second constraint. Let me put it here. Is x1 plus x2 x1 equal to 20. And you're going to use the space for the second constraint here. So it's this space. So this constraint should be eighty or point. Any questions? If you want to take a train, again, I want to use the same format that I use for the first one. I know this is for the carbon pickup, right? So I'm going to use these two parameters here for carbon pickup. So these are as follows. You do this one times x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6 plus x7 one times six, and the solution of both. So we follow the same format for the first and the second question. Now you can hit enter. It will be zero. Then we have an extra constraint, which is this constraint right here. X1 needs to be less than or equal to 40. So that will be our third constraint. So that will be very easy. You just come here, say this is equal to X1. And that's it. Any, any questions? Now some of you are uh, already a little bit ahead. That's fine. If you can, um, if you don't have questions and you're familiar with Excel, you can uh, keep some of these steps. But if you really want to have any other So we have a constraint. Any questions? We have our three constraints. We already have our model ready for solver. So going back to the lecture, here we have the first constraint, the second constraint, and the third constraint. Okay, now we're going to set up the, the solver. So we're going to go to the data tab and select solver. If you go to Excel,
at the top you have several tabs just click on the one that says data and you should have in this corner you should have this folder available if you don't see it then that means that your computer is not set up yet. So I'm going to show you how to set up the solver. So how many of you have, don't, do not have this solver? Okay, good. So let me walk you through the process. So we need to add, or we need to install the analysis tool pack and the solver adding into Excel. So in order for this to show up in your in your computer. So you have to go through this and first go to the file path, then select the Excel option, and then install. So let me show you that in Excel. You go here, file, options. This window will show up. Then from this left menu, you click Add In. And this list will show up. And then from here, you need to find the solver Add In, which in my case is here. If it's not showing up at the top, you have to scroll down to your file. You need to find this add. Now, then you need to hit OK. And let me know if it's showing up. Because my computer already have that installed. So let's see. Go back to options. Then you go do add-ins. Find the solver. And hit go. So if you hit go, it will show the window. And then you check the solver add-in. And that process is documented here. Options. And then hit go. And okay. And you should have the if you go to the data tab, then the solver should be there. Anyone? Any problems? Issues? No? Okay. So you're ready to go. Now we're gonna use the solver to solve this problem. So if you go here and hit solver, this window is going to show up. The first thing that the solver is going to ask you to put into it is the objective. So this is the objective function. And we have a cell that is called the target cell. And that's the cell that we need in that uh, bar. So you can hit this box here and then find the target cell and then click enter.
Now, the second thing that we need to decide is what type of objective function we have. So in this problem, we have a mechanization problem, so we keep the option of that selected. But if instead of that, we have an initiation problem, then we have to select it. And we will not talk about this yet. But for now, we just focus on back. Then, we need to input the changes that I also with target decision values. So we go here, we hit this uh, box, and we select all our decision variables. So in this case, they are both together, so I'll just highlight, highlight them together, and then hit Enter. So now you have your decision variables, you have your empty function, we need to set up the constraints. So to add the constraints, you go here to the, this right hand side uh, menu, you're going to hit add, and this box is going to show up. So we're going to enter each constraint individually. So the first constraint, the left side of the constraint will go here, and the right hand side of the constraint will go here. You can change the sign, so if it is inequality, it is greater than or equal, and so on. So you can tell the model what type of constraint it is. So this one is a less than or equal constraint. This box will have the left side of the constraint, so I'm going to hit this cell, V14. And this box here will have the right-hand side of the constraint, which is this one. And I have my first constraint. What are you doing next? <clears throat> you hit Add and go to the next one. So I'm going to hit Add. And I'll do the same process for the second constraint. Left side. Less than or equal, right hand side. Click Add. And then the last constraint, this one, less than or equal, this one. And then that, that was the last constraint, so I hit OK. So I now have my three constraints in this way. Any questions? Any problems? Okay, Are we forgetting about something? We have the uh, variable needs to be greater or equal to zero. Okay. We need to have the, the software know or the program know that our variables are going to be positive. There's two ways that you can do that. First way is very easy. Just tell the model, say, on the same variables are negative. You check that box, that automatically tells Excel that your variables are going to be greater or equal to zero. Or, if you want to be specific, you can go here and select this, this export variable and tell this needs to be greater or equal to zero. 
but you don't have to do that if you check it that far. Okay, so for now I'm just going to keep that. We're going to keep this, we're going to keep this. Okay. Now the next thing that I want you to, to observe from this is we need to select the solving manner. So the default is the GRN, GRG uh, nonlinear. This um, this is something that you still don't have in cover. We, we, we will not cover this in class. This is part of the material that Dr. Novak covers in her uh, special course, special topic course in optimization. But uh, essentially, nonlinear means that you, you're not going to have all your variables with the exponent or power, uh, power to 1. You're going to have x to the power of 2, x to the power of 3. So the shape of the graph will change. But that will not be part of this course. We are dealing with linear programs. So we're going to change this solving method to, I wonder what. The simplex, which is the method that you learn. So you're going to select the simplex method, simplex LP. And then you're going to hit solve. This is the window that you're going to see after the cell is done solving the problem. So the cell, the cell is going to tell you solve about the solution. All constraints are automatic solutions for a second part. So you can keep the solving solution. Or you, if you want to keep the original value, just select that. Uh, but for now, just keep this over solution. Something else that I want you to observe is this. Excel provides you with some reports. And this one in particular is very important. And we're going to talk about the sensitivity in class. But just make sure that you see that this is available. And we go back. We're going to go back to this later in the semester. But for now, just the answer, not sensitivity, not nothing. Click OK. And here's your solution. So it is the same solution that we found in the graphical method. You have 20 and 60. The objective function is 180. And all the constraints are satisfied. Something that I want to show you is the reason that I'm, I'm using these formulas. Let's say I want to change the selling price to 50. I can do that. Just hit enter. Then I can solve this problem again. You see how would that change my solution? So you see, now, now production is different, and the objective function is different. Just by changing one value. Okay, so if you're working for a company, you build your optimization model, you solve the problem for the instance that, that you saw at that point, but if later you the, the production cycle, if something changes, you can go back, change those parameters, and solve the problem again, and get a new solution. So let me go back to it is 27 and let me solve this one more time. So we went back to the same answer. Any questions? Any questions? Everything that I discuss here in class is, is described very specific here, very detailed. 
So you can refer to these notes one more time if you have questions. And I will post the video so you can also see the, the video of the lecture in case you have uh, questions about this in the future. So this is everything we need, everything we did. Solution. And that's it. Any, any questions? Okay, so I'll give you the chance to work on this problem. Okay, simple problem. This one needs to modify what we did in class. So if you want to take that file with a different name and use that file to solve the task, you can do that. Uh, you can work in groups of two or three. And I'll be here to help you out. So let me know if you have questions. I think the other one I